हेलो 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 चेक हेलो चेक तो बन जे अच्छा ना कहीं तो
મારું આયરી બતાવ મી વાળું બતાવ Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Life is a miracle, and every breath we take it is a gift. With this beautiful line, I am Nixon Das, Assistant Professor, Dinsa Patel College of Nursing, welcomes you all in this national conference on OSCE and role of nurse in infection control. organized by iqac and fundamentals of nursing department dinsa patel college of nursing a very good morning to all the dignitaries faculties and my dear students let us go further and have a pleasure of listening the welcoming remarks of our principal of dpcn and today's organizing chairperson professor virendra jain sir welcome to you all in this national conference on oski and role of nursing in infection control organized by iqac hello hello yes sir please am i audible yes sir please my continue. voice is audible Yes, yes, you are audible, sir. Please continue. Okay, and uh, our both the two respected resource person have joined this. Uh, yes, uh, Asha, madam, the first resource person has already joined, sir. The second, sir, okay. will join after a few time. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. So once again, good morning, all of you, and Jai Maharaj. I behalf of Dinsha Patel College of Nursing, I have warm welcome all the dear students, faculty, for joining this a uh, very oh. important. conference on oski system and role of nurse in infection control i behalf of dpcn i heartily welcome our two eminent speaker of today's uh, uh, session first i warm welcome professor asha patel madam in charge principal government college of nursing ahmedabad i welcome you madam thank you sir i warm welcome our today's second speaker mr anil patidar He is an assistant professor at Manika Ka Topawala Institute of Nursing, Changa. I welcome you, sir. I uh, I welcome all the dear faculties and dear students from other institute for joining this conference. As we all know, the today our both the session are very important to learn about uh, OSCE systems and the role of nurse in infection control unit. so once again i welcome you all of all of you the participants once again thank you over to you mr nixon sir 
please thank you sir for a welcoming note oski is a modern type of examination which is used as present in health services to assess clinical skills various skill performance in clinical side such as communication clinical examination medical and even nursing procedures in terms of interpretation of the results to enhance our knowledge in this topic we are glad to have an eminent personality with us from the nursing profession mrs asha patel ma'am who is at present working as in charge principal at jinera amdavad madam will deliver an expert talk on the topic of oski now it is my privilege to introduce ma'am journey in the nursing profession madam has pursued bsc nursing in the year 2002 from jinera amdavad ma'am has pursued masters in nursing in the year 2008 from jinera amdavad in the year 2002 to 2004 ma'am has worked as cardiac ot nurse at un meta hospital while working madam was having specialized in training ecg tmd customer care by apollo health and lifestyle at new delhi madam is specially trained in pediatric and neonatal cardiac surgery at alumna hospital kochi from the year 2004 to 2006 madam has served as nursing tutor at singhi institute of nursing amdavad from 2008 to 2015 madam has worked as cm patel nursing college as assistant professor in the year 2015 to 2022 madam has worked as lecturer at jinera amdavad at present in the year 2022 recently madam has been promoted to in charge principal at jinera amdavad so we are very delighted to have such a dynamic personality amidst us so over to you ma'am please take us into the session hello can i audible yes, yes okay, good morning good morning principal sir from jinsa patel nursing college in the good morning to all participants and i thank you very much for providing this opportunity to me on our oski session to conduct it thank you to all let's we start it shall i share screen now the today topic it is a very essential topic it is an objective structured clinical examination oski we have heard the many time oski oski it is related oski means it is an objective structured practical examination and oski means clinical examination both are the differ but in a some components are the same part there now in that uh, we are uh, near future we are going to uh, extra means uh, we are going to uh, this new syllabus whatever the converted by the imc in that the semester system also they are meet on the oski and the oski examination now the today topic it is in a oski objective structured clinical examination in that what is the oski it is in a totally clinical base next slide please oski is a form of performance based testing used to measure candidates clinical competency it is a totally clinical examination sat that in the oski means which domain we have a three domain cognitive psychomotors and the attitude here the oski it is in a which domains we are established on that so it is a totally based on the psychomotor domains on that okay, whatever the skills are that what we learn on to the skill that skill plus knowledge we have to evaluate it in the oski examination during oski candidates uh, candidates observes and evaluate as they go through the series of station in which they interview examine and treat the standardized patient some time of medical problem in that oski it is in your excuse me please 
Mute, uh, unmute yourself, the participant. Yes. Nikshan, please share the slide. In my side, that is the disabled to carry. Okay. During OSCE, candidate observe and evaluate it as they go through the series of station. Okay. In later on, we know what they, uh, these are the OSCE, which are the types of OSCE, which are the setting is required. This everything we know, but in that, that is the, the series of station. Okay. At a time, we not completed the one task. That task, we have to fragment it on the station. So this type of the methods we are conducting examinations. So it is called the OSCE. Next. Next, please. Next slide. Advantages of OSCE. Okay, why we have, what is the benefit to conduct the OSCE? In that, it is in a more valid examination side that. Okay, that is a more valid, more accurate. We are getting the results on it. Examiner can decide in a, a, advance. For organizing the OSCE, it is not an easy task. For that, there is a need for the lot of preparation for the examiner sites. So that is in a, can decide in a advance. Second one, better control on content and complexity. In that, it is a organized the OSCE for that require the critical thinking. And there is in a number of uh, contents we have and at each one, it is in a better than and also there is a need for control on the content and their complexity means each stations we have to develop the checklist and to evaluate the, the students on that. It is in a more reliable. In the many institutions are conducting the OSCE nowadays, many programs. In the previously and the today, the all MBBS exams, it is going on through the OSCE. So it is in a more reliable, we can record it each, we can by the audio and the video, whatever the students are performance, that performance we are recording for me and we are getting the each and every steps criticized on that. So it is in a more reliable, taste wide range of skills are there. Okay, according to the taste wise range of skill, okay, later on we see the example okay, uh, for the assessment of the patients. So there is enough uh, six type of the assessment of the patients is required. So there is the first station, it is an inspection, second palpation, percussion, observation. Means we, uh, we have to fragment that this and we whatever the student skills are that we have to evaluate it correctly. More objection, objective examinations are that. So that is it is not on the one domain we are assigned. Here, there is a more objective of the examination means students are all skills, their knowledge, their attitude, their behavior. It is uh, like that way that we are covering the all objective of the student and it should be in a more practical. Okay, not only the theoretical, we can mug up and we can write it, but there is a how you coordinated your knowledge with the skill, with the practice and showing your attitude to treat the Scenario. If there is a scenario, we can put the patients are there, dummies are there, how you can evaluate it. So here there is in a totally more practical based examination are there. Next, please. Characteristics of OSCE. In that there are the characteristics of OSCE are there. It is in a next slide. It is an assessment approach similarly used to measure the clinical competency. See, here we are discussing about the OSCE. The word suggests it is in a clinical competency. Okay, throughout 
we are performing the clinical activity in our respective clinical area and this is the stations that we have to the teacher has to evaluate it, whatever the clinical competencies we can find out into the students kit should be planned or structured it should be planned and structured means or it is not in a temporary jo bhi participant ye sab kar rahe so please stop that everything because we all are the professional persons are there i think so if you are the professional person so you don't do that type of the mistakes on it examinations formats or framework it this is in a it is in a plans framework are there so examiner ke who is in a committee of the examination that committee members they have to do the prior work on it they have to decide what they have to include on it and they have to make the segmentation what which are the examiners are there what type what stations they have to prepare which station how much time they have to give everything it is in a need to plan priorly so that is the examination format or framework it is a required that before conducting the oski we need the blueprint on our hand different type of the test methods can be incorporated into it means in that test method there is a one station you have to prepare for the inspections of the patient second station you can perform for the any procedures the students can perform it so that type of the different stations we have to plan on it next please in most station shoots are observed by one or more examiner sir that in the ox ki you are uh, planned for the five station so there is a need for the five examination examiner okay, they are evaluated the each student whatever the students are performing their activity so there is a need for examination in some stations you plan for any scenario ki they have to apply the cognitive domain so there is this station it is a no need for more examination but there is in a skill or there is they have to perform procedure so in this area there is a need for one examiner to evaluate the person so each stations require the examiner code as they carry out the task or interpreted the clinical material write not or answer Notes or answer question. Okay, you are preparing the some uh, X-ray films, or I uh, mean, you have to evaluate the students can able to read the X-ray recordings, or students can read the ECG. So that scenario you have to create it, put onto the stations, and the students who is appear in the exam. So that stations you have to prepare the some list on that, or providing the answer sheet to write on that, and they are left on to that same station. So this is a also for one examiners required next please method of stations method and station there are the two types of the mainly methods one it is an examiner observer and the second one students answers on the answer sheet please enter on it examiner observer ki each station there is a need for examiner ki who are observing the students performance are there ki there is a one scenario ki procedure station so that scenario how the students are taking the history from the patients how they are maintaining the rapport with the patients their communication skills whatever the uh, priority needs of the patients that the students can identify or not Which are the history they are taking the past, past history, present history, current medical history, team complaint of the history, the everything, the how the students are performing and the observer who is observer means examiner. If they have the one sheets are there, one checklist are there, they are making tick marks on it. At that time, they are not asking any question to the any students. Only they are observing, and based on that prior checklist, they are evaluating the students. second one students answer on the answer sheet this is also you can prepare the one station you can put the uh, previously i told you that there is an x ray film ecg film that is you can stick one abg reports are there get real blood test report you can sticks on the one station and provide the pen and paper to the patient uh, student 
and they can whatever they are observing on that report okay, what is the normal oxygen or carbon dioxide levels are there how they can uh, patient is in alkaline mode or acidic mode so they can describe on that paper sat that so this is in a two way examiner you can conduct in that that is one skill way and second one that knowledge they can apply it is in not only the test you can put all the emergency drugs any emergency instrument or crash cards so that items also you can put on to the speech next please how can use of oski okay, these are the station for the history collections second one physical examination in the physical examination it is in a performance uh, procedure sir that so how you can palpel to the patient inspect to the patients auscultation to the patients then you are performing the mental status examination then neurological examination checking the all cranial nerves this everything it is in a one example in the oski next please clinical decision making if you are giving the scenario and they have to find it out that which are the diagnosis are that it is are the symptoms so what the patient how you can diagnose on that or with the based on that history based on that uh, reports are that management of the clinical situation the patient's reports are the how you can manage the conditions are that and the patient's education you can also put the last patient the patient has a diabetes mellitus hypertension so which type of the educations you can give to the patient and the, there is the one patients are there or one dummy patients are there then you have to perform this activity into the oski here not only the pen and paper can evaluate but there is a different type of the stations are that that stations each stations you are getting the time and you have to perform the activities on it. next health promotional models means also you can put everything you have to keep in your mind ki health promotional models are there in that number of activities we have to do and upgrade the patient's health but here the station ki which health promotional model which activity which components you are taking that is in a physical components mental or spiritual components so that is the way you can prepare the table communication skill means how you can interact with the patients that also you have to the examiner has to evaluate it on it during the procedure or any taking the any history prior procedure or before procedure after procedure there is a need the communication it is in a vital element to maintain the uh, relationship with the patients basic and advanced nurse procedures also we are performing on to the dummy or in a patient sides so that is a, also you can put the one sessions on it next please how you can organize the oski the oski on the today we decided in afternoon we have to conduct the oski so it is not a easy task each and every component in the starting you are facing the number of uh, destruction or number of barriers but it is in a one way you start then repeatedly you are performing or organizing the oski so it is in a easy job start for organizing of the oski so there is a need for advanced planning each and every activity so there is in a surprise test we are planning but surprise test for the student not for the examiner because they have to prior to advanced planning is required what they have to ask the construction of the question and everything in the oski site that is the need the more hard work for the examiner so for that they have to decide the advanced planning how much stations they are performing what the station they are putting on to the each station how much times they are getting they have to prior prepare the checklist or rating scales everything they have to prepare organize the day before examinations and also they have to inform to the students that this exam we are conducting on to the oski days Okay, you can see in the many uh, colleges in the COVID situation, they had to plan to the OSCE examinations for the students. The day of examination and the after day after the examination. Okay, you have to plan to conduct the OSCE examinations or through OSCE examination. So you can divide it into the four stage. First one, it is in an advanced planning. In the advanced planning, you have to examiner has to prepare the 
what the examination the station scenario second one they have to plan for that each station there is a checklist each station there is a required the examination where they have to conduct into that particular advanced skill labs or not the one patient uh, one students are performing the activity second students cannot observe that it is in a each cabin they have to prepare for it so that is need for advanced planning organizing the day before examination they have to arrange everything into that labs or into that they have the advanced skill labs or medical surgical nursing labs or pediatric lab list whatever this respected specialty area they can plan on that day before everything need for the settings and with the plan and paper the day the day of examinations they have to inform to the students and they have to evaluate the students ki there is a five station five students they are entering onto the one side each state you have to give instruction to the students ki each station they have to take the five minutes and again the bell is ringing they have to move for the second so that five students five minutes for each station and that in a uh, the whenever the patients enter and the exit gates at the deeper everything comes on each and after examinations the examiner has to evaluate collect the all papers and they have to send into the means they have in that uh, collecting uh, that critics uh, on that and make the marks on that and put the everything it is in a settle into the lab in that next one it is in a steps of oski okay how that is a have a sets of clear objective so whatever the examiners and the examin means teachers and the students both have a clear cut objectives on it identify the practical aspects ki which are the practical based in that scenario you are putting but here we cannot put that type of the question the students only can write it so that is in a practical aspect based you have to put it select the task ki within a 4 minutes or within a 5 minutes the students are perform that task we cannot put the incubations student has to perform this is one example you can write it the student has to prepare the incubation tray on it so this is a one task student has to perform vital sign student has to uh, criticize one scenario so this is the according to the time you can plan the task on that second one break into sub task if it is you have to do the uh, oski or to the one components or two components so that is the one components you can prepare the five uh, stations on it so that is in a sub task if one patient you need for the you are examining the urine sugar so for that one task one station you can prepare the history of the patient second station you can prepare that uh, that tray for that uh, urine sugar test third task you can prepare for that is the exam exact procedures on it fourth task you can prepare the after care of the patients or recording and reporting that way one task you can decide a divided into the sub task assign score for each sub task okay, that is uh, we are preparing the checklist on each students are performing according to the weightage you have to give the marks to that particular station second one set up the station okay, whatever the requirement you are putting the scenario that is the need for pen and paper if there is the patient sites are that if dummy patients are there or any dummies are there So in that also the student has to perform the procedure. So all articles you have to prior put on each station. Conduct after orienting students and examiners. In that before entering the students into the labs for the giving the OSCE examination. Before that they have the oriented onto the each station. Make note of the process and review. That is the one recorders on that if they are. The, in the work of the recorder okay, every 5 minutes or 4 minutes or 3 minutes whatever you decided on your institutions or on your side so they have to ring in the bell and recording uh, recorded to the each how many students are coming the numbers and everything it is that analysis the results and use the same for students assessment if uh, you have to analyze the results if that is in a based on practical examination whatever that traditionally we are taking so that is the results what the you can find out the student scoring and you are conducting the oski level in the advanced examining so in both way you have to include it and compare on it in that second one components of the oski for the oski what it is in a required 
in the examiner coordinator committees are there each institution they have the exam coordinator committee in that examination coordinator the first vital role it is in a coordinator they are plan on it they how they have to conduct it in which day they have decided if there is an annual planning are there to so the annual calendar there is in a first term second terms or uh, final terms pre term university exam they are planning on that and that planning they have to divide it it is in a uh, they have to conduct into the traditional day or oski day and that is a decided it is in oski day that second planning for examination of coordinator they have to prepare according to the students their classes if the specialty they have to take uh, need to take it according to the which uh, which area they have to conduct so there is a need for uh, scrutinize everything it is the role of the examiner of the coordinator they what they have to how much syllabus they have to conclude it and there is in a based on the critical thinking they have to plan the scenario on it. then list of skill if which skills they have to evaluate it there is the first year students so they need for history taking skill second year students some advanced procedure third year students there is a some advanced procedure fourth year they have to going to register on it so based on that skill they have to plan on it attitude and behavior to be assessed okay. that is in a oski it is a total psychomotors are there so there is a three are included the knowledge behavior attitude and the skill so they have to list out in the today oski what they have to assess after three months again they plan after six months again they plan and through that they a student has to develop the skill on it criteria for scoring for assessment in the advance they have to write it so that criteria they are preparing if i have to organize one oski on a vital sign so that is in a how the students are performing into the routine way and that activity i divided uh, into the sub task and each task there is a checklist it is in a required so this way each station need for the checklist so everything it is in a uh, before they have to plan the examiner examine and sites here these are the component okay, which are the essential component in the examiner okay, each station there is a examiner it is needed five stations are there so there is at least four examiners is needed examines means oppress the students it is in a vital role without students we cannot conduct it so that is exam students on the side means which lab advanced skill labs or they have to plan for other type other labs so this is a site it is a required time and time allocation between the station it is in a specific criteria for the sk or osp if you are conducting the osp so that is a 2 to 4 minutes time we are giving the each station and the oski to greater than or equal to 4 minutes or to 10 minutes that time of the stations we have to allot it to the students or each station model for repetitive examinations okay we are putting one uh, area is the first year students i have to conduct i can put the anatomy models uh, in the heart lungs and then give the scenario okay, you have to write only the member um, that's membrane or write the only while sir that this much we have to put it not the uh, totally anatomy and physio of the heart so it is not that in the oski you can put the model and be specific that limited so you have to write the wall or you have to write the physiological uh, that uh, physiological functions of that in the 1 2 3 4 it is in a specific condition and there is a need for repetitive examinations so you can change the model in the next Uh, oski examination question again i told you that there is be specific of that question they have to write clear cut environment of exam station okay here in the oski you can conduct into the one hall but in the oski there is a require the small cabin if you are conducting into the lab so there is a no small cabin at that so you can use the curtain in the ward side also we are using the curtain but it is in a there is a one single unit we have to require to conduct the exam stations oski exam examination station circuit okay, it is on a one by one they have to perform it if you are breaking the one task so there is a you have to one by one each students are getting the 
each station for equal time. Patients, if there is a real or stimulated, that is a dummy patients are there, and there is a stimulated nowadays advanced dummies are there. Timekeeper, time clock, and time signals are there. Every five minutes or five minutes we are given, so there is a ringing of the warning bell. If before one minute there is a warning bell, and then at the end of the task there is a final bell. It is a ringing. Contingency plan, okay, whatever the paper plan or whatever your plan is, okay, there is a break to that uh, students. At the time, you are preparing the five to eight station. So it is a required the more planning. It is that everything comes small, small planning. It is in a contingency. Assessment of the performance of the OSCE and viva was or oral examinations. Okay, there is a, some stations, they are performing procedure. So sometimes you have examiner can ask the normal ratios and everything. It's come on to the base on the stations they can decide it. Next, please. Organization of the hospital. We already seen there is a stations are there, which are the components are there. Here there is the how you can organize the hospital. OSCE examination consists about 10 to 15 stations, each of which require about 4 to 5 minutes. The number of station and time spent on each station may vary based on need of evaluation. If there is in a 10 or 15 stations, it is in a maximum, but it requires the 5, 8, 10, it is in a enough. We can plan, at the time I have to conduct the 60 students examination, so it is not there. If there is in a specific criteria on it, You can decide it. I have to at a time 40 students. I can prepare the 40 stations and take it. So it is not that. There is a specific criteria to judge the students or evaluate the students as well. And there is a how much stations you are performing that number of examiners we have to require. So that is in a maximum 10, to, uh, 10 stations, 10 to 15 stations. And each station you can give the four to five minutes. And it is a totally need of evaluation. In that evaluation, each station has a criteria. Not without criteria, we cannot prepare the station. The checklist, before that, you have to put on this size. All stations should be capable of being completed in the same time. If there is a one station, you can put the seven minutes. One station, you can five minutes. One station, you can prepare the three minutes. It is not there. Each station, it is required the equal time. The students are rotated through all station and have to move to the next station at the signal. If there is a one student is finished their activity within a three minutes, the time is five minutes, they cannot jump to the next station. The time bell is a ringing, finish it, and they can move to the next station. Every station the students are moving, it is in the same time and at a time. At the station are generally independent, students can start at any procedures stations and complete the cycle. It is a generally independent. Students can start any procedure station and complete the cycle. Whenever the examiner or examiner committee, they can decide at the station. So they are not interrelated to the each station. That is in a different station. Each station has their independent task order. The students can work to the first and second. They can jump to the Second, but the fifth number student station they can jump to the first, fourth number students they can jump to the uh, jump on a first, uh, fifth number. So, this is the rotation target. For that, we have to make the independent task. Next, please. Yes, using 50 station for four times back it, please back four minutes each 15 stations and complete the examination within a one hour. Each station is designed to test a component of clinical competency. Okay, here, there is a number of stations are there. The OSCE benefit at the time, if number of stations are there, you can evaluate the number of students at a time. But there is a need for number of examination, examiners also. At the sub stations called the procedure station, students are given tasks to perform on patients or simulators. At all such stations, there are the observers with agreed upon checklist or rating scale to score the student's performance. If there is a 
in the you are preparing the 10 station you can prepare the two or three stations for procedure so that stations that is the checklist it is already they have to ready they can scale whatever is suitable for the examiner committee and the student has to read it that okay, what they have to perform it, it is in everything prior it should be decided a student has to perform the cpr so on that cpr i mean you have uh, examiner has to stick one that the patient need for cpr so this is the scenario and patient you have to perform the cpr then students are reading that uh, station that sheet paper they are sticking onto the station side and they have to start the performance and the examiner has to evaluate it based on checklist or rating scale at the other stage it's called response station student respond to question of the objective types or interpreted data or record that finding of the previous procedure station okay these are the two type of the stations are that previously we see there is a two methods are that in that uh, there is a observer or evaluated method in that we can included the procedure stations are there and second one the examiner methods in that response stations okay, you have to put some scenario you have to stick some or test are there and that student has to read it and they have to write that uh, whatever that decision or clinical management of particular okay there is a one scenario it is in a uh, person has you have to put the figures on that the patient has a facial palsy bell's palsy the sign and symptoms of the patient they can put it and based on that criteria the student has to write on it so in one positive aspect of the uski station it is in a Uh, simulated OSCE station and real life OSCE station. Simulated OSCE stations we can perform in our lab, and the real life OSCE stations we have to plan into the clinical sites. The patients actually patients are there. Next please. Which are the problem? Problem using uh, problems of using OSCE. Okay, there is an advantage. Some problem, some various also we have to struggle on it. If there is in a lack of feasibility if we have a no oski infrastructure uh, that advanced skill lab infrastructure no any oski stations are there so it is a quite difficulty to arrange everything on it shortage of training for queue so here for conducting the oski there is an examiner also need for the trainers are there so the examiner examination committee they all have to use to or they have knowledge regarding to the oski shortage of examiner that is the number of faculties is required to evaluate the students in each station so there is a less faculty it is in a quite problem is arising lack of interest in examiner because it is a required the prior preparation advanced preparations onto the examiner side so there is a lack of interest of the examiner sometimes we can find out it is in, if you are drawing one paper it is a easy task but there is a in that paper you have to construct the object and see so it is in a difficult task so here the same way you can assign to the patient and they are performing one procedure evaluate so it is a easy task but you can say in a sub fragment or conduct as a oski oski it is in a require the more work for the examiner side lack of enforce guideline ki they have to conduct but they are not knowing about the how they have to conduct which are the stations they can perform so this is also one problem they are facing by the examiner disadvantages of the oski not tested on the theory ability to look at patient okay, here that words is suggest it is in a clinical examinations so that is in a theory based we cannot conduct the oski demanding it is in a whatever the traditional methods we are performing feel our education systems are not demanding in the foreign sites there is a oski it is in a demanding and nowadays there is a many courses are there like the nurse practitioner in critical care so they have to give the examination it is a totally based on a oski uh, in that uh, near future our new syllabus are implemented so in that also also they are including the oski examiner required to pay close attention it is also these advantages for the examiner side ki they had cannot get any chance to lack it because there is a criteria are specified each criteria they have to evaluate the student so that is also close attention required for it time required for preparation is the more because 
each station what they have to put and that evaluate criteria the examiner has to prepare a bit maintaining uniform difficult level okay there is difficulty levels we cannot find out the uniformity so it is a through practice through organizing the oski we can identify it this is the one example of model of oski ki there is a station 1 as is the patient x identify three priority nursing needs ki by observations ki you are getting the 4 minutes or 5 minutes this patients or this scenario you can put it by observation of the patients you have to write the one to three ki within a 3 minutes within a 4 minute be specific you can write it so this is the one example next please next example this one you have to organize for the first year students so example of the model the anatomy model you can put it conduct mental status assessment of the patient a and identify three abnormal findings okay here they have to put the patient but you are putting the model so you can write it okay there is in a which models are that what is that functions and uh, where it is a uh, situated like that way also you can put it here they are putting the patients onto the brain so that is in a neurological disturbance are there this is also one example if these are the scenarios are there what you have to know about it if there is a pre ec nursing care of patient by and record the procedure so these are the scenario you can patients you can prepare it and evaluate the students next please so this is the patients you can put the pictures or if there is in a real situation examinations are there So you have to assess the patients are there. Patient are on a bypass mode, and the patient has a who is on a ventilator. That you have to write on that sheet. Next, please. Next, please. Procedure station. Can interpret with the ABG report. These are the PA seven point twenty seven, PA zero two forty nine, SCO two twenty four. The name of this condition. Also, you have to write on a paper. Otherwise, in that uh, whatever the patient discharge or on the clinical side, you are getting the report from ABG patients. So that also that report also you can stick and make the two three questions are there. Here there is a hardens twelve tips for organizing an OSCE. Okay, what is to be assessed? This is for the examiner. what is to be assessed first you have to find out okay, which skill they have to assess which topic they have to assess these are the first you have to decide it second is duration of the station in the oski there is a minimum 4 minutes and maximum 15 minutes so there is a duration of each stations they have to decide it number of station it is also very crucial points are there ke okay, number of station number of students and the duration of the station these three are the interrelated and through that you can find out the each examiner examination how much time it is a needed on that use of examiner which examiner you can uh, put onto the which station sites on the performance sites or onto the recorder sites are range of approaches new stations next please organization of the examination next please organization of the examinations assigning priority resource requirement plan of the examination change signal and record this all 12 tips are given by the hardens if there is in a what is they have actually the examiner has to assess it the stations number of station timing their priority which are the resources requirement prior during or after plan for examination everything this is the one scenarios are there okay, there is a numbers are given so that is the each number what the student has to activities they have to perform one examiners recorders are there and the one students are there patient sites are there and each station they have to rotated each this is a exam venues are there next please changing stations if they are entering onto the exam stations next please 
simulated simulated patients are there that you are patient has a dummy patients are there so they have to simulated patients also we can say it that they are what they are uh, you are conducting the history they have to roll as the actual patient this is on the dummy sides you have to examine on it next next please these are the examiner checklist that they have to prepare prior it these are the checklist that the students are asking the question and they have to make the think out of that question from them these are the some examples i have taken it in that everything they have to score out it is a each stations 4 minutes 5 minutes or each station you are putting the 10 marks each patient you are putting then then later on everything we have to compilation and total sub marks we have to divide given to the patient okay, this is the first key point of the history the patient's biodata that history second one it is in a history taking technique third one student attitude to a patient this is a examiner checklist card next please question side okay, which type of the question the student has to ask one sir फ्रेगमेंटेड टाइप ऑफ द्वेश्चन the students are asking the respondents are given and the evaluator has to evaluate it in this uh, history taking procedure next please please share the slide of examiner example of oski the rotations next 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 okay now you can see this is a one example here they are conducted 19 stations are there otherwise you can conduct the five station four station it is in a separate cabin are there 1 2 3 4 5 this is the scenario but whenever we are planning for the actual things so not more than the 10 or if you have to list students then you can prepare the five station if more than 100 students you can prepare the 10 to 15 students are there if you have the exam so this is where there is a one rotation it is in a arising so what you have to put on oski stations next please this is also stations okay, there is in a pneumonia patients are that this is a evaluator checklist and they can put the marks on it here or no next please when used correctly the oski can be highly successful as an instrument to assess competency in examination the oski it is in a very essential to evaluate the student psychomotor learning side there and their attitude their behavior whatever the communication skill with the patients everything we can evaluate it onto the oski base it is in a highly we can perform it and nowadays the many institutions many university they are adopting the oski examination next next at the end of the conclusion the oski have a several distinct advantages in view of this educator and adopted it is an objective method or clinical examination it is in a some disadvantages are there advantages are there but based on based on that the objective method of clinical evaluation it is in a best way of them this will help the students to improve their clinical competency in then the each students are showing the scenario that there is a before starting the examination you have to orient it to the students regarding on each so whatever the each stations they are performing the activity in the first way they have the some peers on that second time they are giving the oski so they have to improve their clinical competencies on it the emphasis is on assessing what the students can do rather than what they know see here 
there is the students are their performance their knowledge they are applying into the clinical sites here that clinical practical we can evaluate in that true ask also you can correct to the students ke this way you have to perform for that learner purpose also in the simultaneously you can teach to each before if there is a no final examination therefore ask give direction for attaining the ultimate aim of teaching learning process it is in a totally direction how you have to correlate the knowledge and a skill domains are there so there is a totally attaining ultimate aim of teaching learning process as a educator as a students whatever their objectives are there that they have to competent on to the practical sides as well as the theory side so this is the best for platform for the OSC, conducting the osc examination we can fulfill the teaching learning process next please now before that i have to conclude it that there is a we are doing it what is the osc and osp both are the same or not if both are the deeper osp means observation structured practical examination and the object osc means objective structured clinical examination in that osp there is a main domain it is in a level of knowledge there is in a high level of knowledge we can apply into the osp and that is a osc side that is only psychomotor domains we have to uh, assess it and there is in a time duration that is a 2 to 4 times per station here greater than 4 times per minutes for the per station for the osp it is a one hall is required for the osc there is in a you have to need one uh, ca cabin each and every single cabin it is required in that examiner uh, it is in a osp there is a not specified there is a two or three personnel for all but into the osc there is in a need for each station there is a expertise requires are there in that osp there is a no need for checklist osc there is a required checklist station patient side that is the osp not required in that osp it is a required in that osp station there is a observer it is not required but in the osp side so it is in a required there is a minor difference between the osp and the osp now here i conclude my station uh, my class it is that in that today class we learn the what is the osp what is their objectives what is the the advantages disadvantages how you can organize the osc and which are the important points and how it is in a useful onto the osc if you have any query any question that you can ask thank you over to nixon thank you ma'am if any student has any questions or queries please they can unmute themselves and ask the question you can write on chat box even or any yes. your feedback we will definitely we can complete your doubts yes you can write down in the chat box also rajput amit ji would you like to ask aap bahar se nikalte hai hello I think, ma'am, no one is there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your informative session. We have covered all the information uh, we required from uh, minimum to maximum. Thank you very much. Now we are moving on to the next expert talk. We are uh, going to expand our knowledge on the topic of uh, role of nurse in infection control, and for that we have speaker, Mr. Anil Kumar Patidar, sir, assistant professor. From Manika Ka Topa Wala Institute of Nursing, Charuchat Changa. Before Sir comment his expert talk, let us have some glimpse of his career in the nursing profession. Sir has completed B.Sc. Nursing in the year 2011 from Bharti Vidyapeet College of Nursing, Pune. Sir has pursued Masters from Critical Care Nursing Specialty at Symbiosis College of Nursing, Pune, in the year 2014. Sir is pursuing is phd from charusat university changa let us uh, see some 
details regarding the experience of the sir. Sir has served as Bharti Hospital and Research Center Pune as staff nurse. Sir has also given his service at Welfare Institute of Nursing and Midwifery Baruch as a lecturer. At present, sir is working as assistant professor at Manikaka Topawala Institute of Nursing. Sir has experience of serving at various workshops, conferences, and CNEs. Sir has also attended various webinar. Sir has also attended various online courses and has been more than 10 to 15 times invited as a guest lecturer at various level. Sir has completed more than six to seven researches, out of which two were funded. And Sir has also presented a paper at state level. So we are very fortunate to have such a dynamic personality amidst us. So over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sanjay. Uh, so Because of some technical issues, sir will join us within two minutes. Yes, Nixon, sir.
So now I made you a host. Okay. Okay. Resume. Okay. Yes, now Nixon sir, it is visible. Yes, sir, it is visible. It is requested to all the delegates to kindly mute themselves. Okay, shall I start? Yes, sir, please start. Okay, thank you, sir, for introducing me to the audience. Uh, before we start the presentation, I would like to thank the DPCM uh, team for allowing me and giving me opportunity to present here. The topic is given to me that is the role of the nurses in infection control. The outline of the today's presentation, we will learn about what is an infection. Subsequently, we will learn about hospital acquired infection. Different statistics of the infection in the hospital and of the infection, then sources of the infection and different preventive measures. At the last, the role of the nurses in prevention of the infection in the hospital. Why, why the role of the nurses are important in terms of the prevention of hospital acquired infection? Because everyone is, knows about the the nurses are primary caretaker of the patient and they always be the, the patient and they are always rich to getting the infection while taking care of the patient. So not only the, the healthcare worker are getting the infection, but patient, uh, patient who is admitted in the hospital is always rich to have an infection. And second thing, Infection, as you know, the infection is continuously developed in the hospitalized patients and also it is affecting the healthcare worker. In the, all the public health hospital and all the central hospitals, despite of the uh, taking the all preventive measure and despite of the uh, following the all protocol and guidelines in the hospital setting. Uh, Nixon says someone is talking in between. Please, it is requested to all the delegates to mute themselves. Please do not speak in the between. So, what is infection or infection control? The infection is mean that as we know, the microorganism are present in everywhere in the environment, even in the hospital environment. These microorganisms are also present in our skin, our hand, and other part of the body. When these microorganisms are entered into the, our body through the defense route and start the multiplication and produce any disease, which is known as infection. So generally, these all the microorganisms are not present in the normal person. So what is infection control? The infection control means where the application of the any policy and guideline to it is help to reduce the risk of spreading the infection among the patient and healthcare worker. And this policy and procedure are utilized or implemented in the all the hospital as well as the animal healthcare facility. <laughs> Here we are talking about the infection in the hospital, which is generally known as a hospital acquired infection. This hospital acquired infection also known as a nosocomial infection or healthcare associated infection. How do we define the hospital acquired infection? This, this infection is developed in the patient who is admitting in the hospital. After the 48 hour, the patient is uh, manifesting the some symptoms is related to to any infections. Oh. Nixon, sir, please. I request to uh, every participant to please mute them.
Just a second, I'll do it. So someone is, is speaking Mysuria Divya. Yes, yes, I'll do it. Okay. So what is hospital acquired infection? The hospital acquired infection means it is acquiring in, in, into the hospital only. When the patient is admitting the, in the hospital, at the time patient doesn't have any symptoms related to infection. But the symptom is developed after the 48 hours of the admission, which is known as a hospital acquiring infection, nosocomial or healthcare associated infection. The example of the healthcare associated infections are central line and peripheral line associated blood stream infection, catheter associated urinary tract infection, ventilator associated pneumonia, surgical site infection. Let's see some statistics related to the hospital acquired infection. According to the World Health Organization, hundreds of the million patients are affected by healthcare associated infection every year. And out of it, the ICU acquired infection is most common because the in the ICU, there are the many factors that may contribute to increasing the chances of infections are the first one, the continuously the changes of the prescription of the antibiotics that make the patient is more resistant towards the antibiotic. The second, continuously doing the invasive procedure on the patient, which is allowed to entering the bacteria into the patient's body. More than 20% of the all nosocomial infection are acquired in intensive care unit and emergency room. Okay, what are the factor patient at risk of infection in healthcare setting. The factors that are contribute to increase the chance of the getting the infection, especially in the patient. The first, as earlier I said about continuously changes of the prescription of the antibiotic. The patient, especially patient who is admitting in the ICU is required the antibiotic for the prevention of the infection. But if we are continuously changes of the antibiotic pre prescription in the shorter duration, it again make the patient more vulnerable toward the antibiotic resistance. And that antibiotic won't work against the particular infection. Some of the uh, procedure, like a high-risk procedure or in invasive procedure that may, for example, intercoastal drainage or central line, that which may allow to enter the bacteria into the, the patient's body. Not only the hospital care, uh, hospital setting factor are responsible for the infection, but the sum of the patient factor is that may lead to increase the chances of the infection like the immunosuppressive patient. If patient doesn't have the uh, immunity to fight against the infection, then the patient have always chances to increase the getting the any additional disease that is the infection. Then. Insufficient application of the standard and isolation precaution. Many of the uh, hospital doesn't have, uh, does not have uh, isolation uh, facility. And this isolation facility usually is for the, any contagious patient, where the contagious patient should be keep there and for the minimal contact with the other patient in the ward or hospital. But when lacking of the, these facilities, again, uh, it keep the put the, all the other patients into the risk to get the infection. Impact of the hospital acquired infection. The prevention and control of the hospital acquired infection is more important because it has a lot of impact on the patient as well as the family member, the society, or the, even the healthcare setting, and in the government. The impact are the first one is the high cost of the treatment. Yes, definitely because it is one of the additional patient is suffering the additional disease or additional infection which it was not present during the admission. Patient has to be stay for the uh, in the hospital for the longer duration uh, to cure from the disease. It may create the long term disability for the patient, and continuously changes of the antibiotic is become a resistance. Toward the uh, antimicrobial therapy. 
the financial burden it is also increase over the healthcare system and over the mortality and morbidity is very higher among the all the hospital acquired patient and unnecessary death can be occur in the patient with the uh, uh, hospital acquired infection what is chain of the infection chain of the infection it is known as a cycle of the infection or and it is important tool to understand the how the patient is acquiring the infection in the hospital as well as the, in the community area it including the chain including the causative agent which is known as pathogen reservoir or sources portal of exit or means of exit mode of transmission the portal of entry the way to enter the microorganism inside the body and person at the risk which is known as a susceptible host the causative agent or pathogen the many of the microorganism is lies in everywhere it can uh, a microorganism like a bacteria virus it parasite fungi or they are enough capable to producing any of the disease inside the human or animal and which are present everywhere second the reservoir and source the reservoir and source means the microorganism where it is live and they are multiplied and increasing the number if we talk about the human reservoir then this bacteria or uh, microorganism can be live there in the human body and it multiply and increasing their number the third one the portal of the exit portal of the exit means how the microorganism is coming out into the environment from the resource state, from the reservoir so there are the many route to coming out uh, all microorganism into the environment through uh, reservoir like a respiratory route while sneezing while drop uh, sneezing while talking the big microorganism is coming out through the urinary tract through the blood transfusion and other vehicle transmission the, the uh, other way uh, other route where the microorganism is coming out into the environment then mode of the transmission once it's come out into the environment there are the different mode where the microorganism can transfer into the one patient to the another there are the mode like airborne transmission droplet transmission and vehicle borne disease which including the food and uh, food and uh, other tra transmission mode where the uh, microorganism is transferred into the one person to the another portal of the entry portal of the entry means how the the microorganism is enter into the another person which are the route where the microorganism can enter into the any of the person body so which are the route the respiratory urinary tract gi route are the common route where the microorganism enter into the the person person at the risk not all the hospitalized patient are always risk to have uh, hospital acquired infection but it depends on the patient or on immunity if the patient is immunocompromised if the patient age is uh, if the neonatal patient and elderly patient they always risk to have hospital acquired infection or any kind of infection because their immunity power is less and the patient who is suffering from the any chronic disease like a diabetes is always have risk to have the uh, risk to get this hospital acquired infection what are the sources of the infection the sources of the infection one first one is a self infection which is known as a endogenous infection the endogenous infection uh, it is developed when usually where the patient is admitted into the hospital at the time patient doesn't have any symptoms related to particular infection but the the bacteria are present in the patient body and how they is transmitted as we know the our body has some natural barrier like skin and mucous membrane which is protect to from the any infection but that barrier is break down during the surgery and during the insertion of the peripheral and central line catheter this 
bacteria these microorganisms is more activated more aggravated and they produce the disease so example of the self infections are any surgical site infection and catheter related infection due to staphylococcus aureus urinary tract infection due to hysteria coli other sources of infection like the cross infection from other patient which is a one, one of the most common source for the uh, infection transfer into the one patient to the another so how is it transfer through the via hands of the staff via instruments and via the environment how to transfer through the hands of the staff the hand hygiene is a most important aspect to prevention of the uh, healthcare associated infection but if we are failing to perform the hand hygiene adequately before and after the procedure then it is remain presence on the, uh, the on the hand and it is chances for the cross infection the example of the this kind of the cross infection that is surgical site infection catheter related infection due to staphylococcus aureus through the via instrument and and equipment not properly sterilized all the equipment we cannot be uh, sterilized in the autoclave some of the instruments are very sensitive toward the heat like a fiber optic endoscope where it requires a specific specific uh, procedure to be performed to clean the fiber optic endoscope so here if we are not cleaning properly then uh, the tuberculosis is may be transmitted through the fibroscope bron bronco instrument via the environment some of the microorganism is present in the environment and uh, the uh, later on they let down on the the surface and uh, when we are contact with the, that particular surface is chances to uh, having the infection and uh, through the environment diarrhea can be developed due to the clostridium deficit other sources of the infections are hospital staff hospital through the hospital staff like is earlier we discuss about the cross infection when the nurses or healthcare worker are not performing the hand hygiene properly then methylene resistant staphylococcus infection can be developed uh, and this mrs infection it caused the surgical wound infection and catheter related infection during the surgery airborne transmission can be happen and and if the any of the healthcare worker is carrier of the streptococcus pyogen in the operation theater then it is chances to develop the infection in the patient let it a puperial fever surgical wound in infection with the streptococcus pyogen the mode of the transmission mode of the transmission of the microorganism there are the many modes of the transmission of the bacteria where the contact droplet airborne vector borne and other but here we are talking about the hospital acquired infection so what are the commonest mode to uh, transfer the microorganism in the hospital setting the first one is the contact second droplet then airborne transmission and common vehicle the contact transmission it is most frequent mode of the transmission and it is transmitted through the direct contact with the patient and indirect direct contact it means the uh, usually it is happen when the any of the healthcare worker is not performing the hand hygiene and directly jump into the one patient to the another patient indirect contact uh, the where the contact is between the person and any contaminated object the objects like any instruments or inanimate surfaces the droplet second one the droplet transmission the droplet transmission where the droplet nuclei is coming into the environment while coughing sneezing talking and the most common example of the droplet nuclei that is tuberculosis infection airborne is similar like as a droplet infection the airborne droplet nuclei can be present in the environment Uh, with the uh, with the dust and it can be in, uh, containing the infectious agent and can be transfer into the the person through the different route like a respiratory route other the route like a common vehicle the contaminants or microorganism can be transfer through the 
the food water medication medical devices and the equipment okay what are the prevention strategy for the hospital acquired infection prevention it should be start from the when the patient is uh, entering in the hospital let's see what are the preventive strategies strategies we have to be follow for the prevention of the h ai the first one standard precaution the standard precaution including the hand hygiene gloves wearing of the mask eye protection wearing of gown patient care equipment and sharp object hand hygiene we have, as we as we all know that hand hygiene is a one, one of the most uh, uh, common technique which is prevention of the infection and hand hygiene when we have to be proper when whenever we touch with the patient especially when uh, taking care about the blood and body fluid we have to perform the hand hygiene every institution have the different infection control policy where the some where it is written the seven steps of the hand uh, hand hygiene six steps of the hand hygiene who is uh, tell the six steps of the hand hygiene now if hand hygiene or hand washing facility is not available or the hand rub we can use but what is the difference when we have to be use hand hygiene when we have to use the hand rub hand hygiene we have to be use whenever you contact with the blood body fluid and etc and hand rub whenever whenever you taking care of the patient but not about the blood and body fluid so there is a chances for the infection so the, the, you can use the hand rub second about the gloves when we have to be wear the gloves So when, whenever we contact with the uh, body fluid, blood, at that time we have to be wear for the prevention of the cross infection. Second, next one is wearing of the mask, eye protection, and face shield is help to getting the uh, prevention uh, to splashes of the blood or spraying of the blood is directly going to the mucous membrane, especially in the eye. So whenever you are taking care of about, about the patient and there are the chances of this play uh, generative splashes or spraying of the blood or body fluid at the time we have to be wear the mask eye product and face shield about the gown gown it is not everywhere is required but in case it require the skin protection and prevention of the soiling of the clothing during the procedure and patient care activity that is spray of the blood and blood fluid Secretion and extract at the time is required. A gowning during the surgery it is required. About the patient care equipment, we should not handle the patient uh, uh, equipment in case if we have any cut out, if the your our mucous membrane or skin is break down, where the the uh, chances of the microorganism can enter into the our body and get uh, we may get the infection. About the taking care about the sharp object. when whenever we are handling about the sharp object especially uh, especially needle and uh, uh, the while removing of the needle from the disposable syringe by the hand it should be avoided the recapping use the needle to be avoided and all the sharp object and needle should be placed in the the puncture resistant the container transmission is precaution some additional precaution we have to uh, taken at the time any contagious patient is admitted in the hospital and uh, there is a chances for the uh, spread the infection in the other patient at the time we have to take the additional precaution it including respiratory precaution the if the respiratory infected patient is admitted he should be keep in the single room or isolation room with the good ventilation and whenever we are taking care about uh, that uh, contagious patient we have to wear the uh, well fitter and filter mask we should as a additional precaution for the contact precaution if any infected patient is admitted in the uh, hospital and there is a chances for the contact transmission then the patient should be preferably placed in the isolation room and whenever we are taking care about the do the patient we have to be wear the non sterile gown and while entering into the room and it should be removed on the leaving the room 
the sharing of the patient caring equipment should be avoided next thing is about the blood precaution especially while taking care about any immunocompromised patient about hiv patient the recapping of the needle is should be avoided another prevention strategy specifically is done in the intensive care unit that is a safety bundle what is safety bundle the bundle is the group of evidence based care it including the some specific interventions they have to be implemented into the patient in order to reduce the chances of the infection the safety bundle including the catheter associated urinary tract infection bundle the catheter uh, cortis including the avoid the necessary urinary catheter insert the using the aseptic technique maintain the catheter using the recommended guideline and review the catheter necessarily daily and remove it promptly With, without any indication do not catheter catheterize the, the patient it may chances for the infection to the patient insert the using the aseptic technique we have to maintain the aseptic precaution while insertion uh, of the urinary catheter maintain the catheter using the recommended guideline the some of the hospital have the uh, specific guideline to how to do care and how many days after we have to taking care of the uh, the catheter so ideally we have to every two days we have to be do the uh, the cleaning of the catheter with uh, uh, maintaining the aseptic precaution then every day we have to be review the whether the catheter is necessary for the patient if it is not then it remove as soon as possible next one it is about the central line associated blood stream uh, infection the central line associated blood stream infection it is developed when the patients have this any central line a central venous special line or any peri peripheral line is inserted into the patient the patient has always chances for the getting the infection so it including the some the intervention we have to be perform to pull uh, decrease the chances to getting the infection like to perform the hand hygiene before the insertion we have to always adhere the aseptic precaution and use the maximal barrier precaution it including we have to be wear the mask cap gown sterile gloves and sterile body uh, full body drap while inserting the Uh, central line. How to prepare the skin? The skin should be prepared to the chlorhexidine solution, and we have we do not select the any site where the chances of infection is very high. Specifically, femoral site is should be avoided in the patient uh, with the obes. Next, this is about. we have to be daily review of the line necessity with the prompt removal of the unnecessary line if patient doesn't required the central line is to be removed out line is secured with the clean and intact drain, uh, dressing usually uh, the central line is covered with the uh, the gauze piece the gauze and any semi transferable uh, the dressing if the patient the these changes of the gauze dressing at least every 2 days and semi permeable dressing at least every 7 day we have to be change as per the ideal second surgical site infection bundle surgical site infection bundle is to be performed in the pre operative post operative and inter operative here i, I have listed out the some of the important uh, intervention we have to be performed for the prevention of the surgical site infection the fair the first appropriate use of the antibiotic as a nurse we have to be look out whether the patient is receive the antibiotic before enter into the uh, operation theater as a or as a pre operatively second one appropriate hair removal the skin preparation it is required the uh, and removing of the hair it is required for the prevention of infection post operatively glucose control the glucose should be control is not only in the pre operative but in the post operative it is also required in the post operative why because it is glu higher glucose it is a flavor uh, one of the 
favorable uh, medium for the increase in the microorganism in the blood peri and post operative normothermia to so maintaining the normal temperature in the patient is again it is helpful to maintain uh, prevention of the infection because uh, hypothermia again it causes the vasoconstriction and decrease the that lead to decrease the blood supply to or the uh, the wound and that may lead to the increase the chances of infection and where the hyperthermia itself is a sign of the infection next bundle is a ventilator associated pneumonia bundle and ventilator associated pneumonia is commonly developed in the mechanical ventilated patient in the icu there are the 10 to 20 percent of the uh, mechanical ventilated patients are affected uh, due to uh, to the ventilator associated pneumonia and for the prevention of uh, web we have to follow the certain thing like a dvt prophylaxis di prophylaxis and oral hygiene head of bed elevated to 30 to 45 degree daily sedation of patient daily spontaneous breathing trial dvt prophylaxis including that is a deep vein thrombosis prophylaxis where the ask the patient to the wear the stocking and the heparin drug is should be uh, is administering in the patient in order to prevention of the pulmonary embolism in the patient gi prophylaxis why is it important gi prophylaxis uh, in the icu admitted patient is continuously receiving the antibiotic for the prolonged days and because of the higher dose of the antibiotic the gi mucosa it can be destructed and it is a one of the uh, barrier for the in prevention of the infection uh, so patient may have chances to develop the infection for the prevention of it Uh, we have to start uh, earlier enteral feeding in the patient and they start the pentaprazole as uh, a proton pump inhibitor into the patient oral hygiene is uh, required in the all the mechanical ventilated patient with the chlorhexidine for the prevention of infection head of the bed elevated to uh, 30 to 45 degree we have to provide the semi forward position to the all the mechanical ventilated patient or for prevention of the aspiration pneumonia daily sedation vacation here the all the mechanical ventilated uh, patients may require some uh, the drug for the sedative drugs like if most common drug is prefer here is a midazolam for the all the mechanical ventilated patient but problem is what with the uh midazolam the patient is may be uh, more sedative or the sedation rate is become a higher and patient it more there is the more chances for the patient is completely depend on the ventilator for the prevention of the, this uh over sedation we have to review the sedation every day if the patient is required then we have to be uh, administer and there are the certain method like a intermediate uh, administration of this uh, sedation in the patient for the prevention of uh, completely depends on the mechanical ventilator daily spontaneous breathing trial so before reviewing the uh, mechanical ventilator on the uh, patient patient should be keep in the spontaneous breathing trial that is cpap and pep mode should be start so this is about the web pandem the so another <laughs> methods for the prevention of the uh infection that is the biomedical waste management biomedical waste management including the collection of the waste the segregation of the waste and the transportation of the waste so here we are discuss about the how do we segregate the biomedical waste in in the hospital setting it has some uh, color coding for the yellow red and white the for the yellow we have to be uh discard the anatomical waste microbiological waste and biotechnological lab waste it including the post operative body part placenta plaster of paris pathological waste cotton waste dressing material and bedding the body fluid contaminated paper and cloth then face and mask and cap it should be discarded here the cytotoxic medication anti cancer drugs to be discarded into the yellow container the red container where the all the tubing the uh, tubing and rubber material is to be discarded here the syringe without the needle iv set catheter gloves urine bag dialysis kit and iv bottle should be discarded here but for the in the in the white 
where the all the sharp instruments should be discarded into the white and transmission uh, container that is a needle searing with the fixed needle the blood and scalpel another method for the prevention of the infection that is sterilization and disinfectant should be used so what are the difference between the sterilization and disinfectant the sterilization is help to completely kill the uh, the microorganism uh, in the any of the surface and the, on the instrument contaminated instrument where the disinfectant it is help to reduce the number of the microorganism if it uh, doesn't help to into the uh, completely kill the bacteria what are the method of the sterilization that the heat sterilization where we use the dry heat and moist heat the dry heat where the uh, sterilization done on the glassware and metal surgical instrument where the moist heat is done for the decontamination of laboratory waste and the sterilization of the laboratory glassware media second one gases sterilization is done in the uh, the instrument which are very sensitive to are the heat and where use the ethanol oxide gas is to process the heat sensitive devices another radiation sterilization is done in the article in the dry state including the surgical instrument the suture prosthesis unit dose ointment and plastic filtration sterilization is done in treatment of the heat sensitive injection and ophthalmic solution and biological products are sterilized through the filtration sterilization method other than disinfectant the disinfectant are divided into the their level of the concentration into the uh, three category high level of the disinfectant intermediate level of the disinfectant and low level of the disinfectant high level of the disinfectant it should be applied for the very shorter period and the efficacy is very higher the 2% of the glutaryl aldehyde that is side effect solution 7% of the hydrogen peroxide 1% of the sodium hypochlorite are example of the high level of the disinfectant intermediate level of the disinfectant where the 0.1% sodium hypochlorite iodophorus and phenolic solutions are example of the ild where the low level of disinfectant it diluted glutaryl aldehyde and phenolics are the example of it at the end we come to the role of the nurses of the infection control the role of the nurse is started at the, when the patient is entering in the hospital there are the role in the biomedical waste there are the role in the uh, sterilization and the disinfectant uh, disinfection of the contaminated object here i have listed out the some of the specific role of the nurses of the infection uh, in the controlling the infection in the hospital setting the first record and report of the hospital associated or healthcare associated infection every nurse uh, as a nurse we have to be record and report of the any of the healthcare associated infection in, into to the uh, infection control nurse we have to be participate in the making the policy and making the protocol related to uh, prevention of the hospital uh, acquiring infection continuous nursing education we have we have to be participate in the continuous uh, nursing education in terms of to, to keep uh, ourselves is up to date about the new guideline and new policies about the infection of the uh, prevention of the infection needle stick injury we have to be aware about the what we have to be do uh, when is a needle stick injury is happen and and we have to be inform inform is informed to the infection control nurses also notification of the communicable disease to the infection control nurse what are the role of the nurses in the biomedical waste management there are the some specific role the uh, nursing staff should be well trained and biomedical waste management through the continuous nursing education once the waste is generated it should be segregated in the specific color code according to yellow red and uh, the white as soon as the injection is administered it should be never be recapped and it should be uh, the needle should be uh, mutilated and disinfected and put into the white translucent puncture proof container plastic waste should be mutilated and disinfected the waste should be transported through the predefined route to a central storage place 
the what are the role of the nurses in the disinfecting disinfection and uh, sterilization as a patient advocate nurses should have the clear understanding of the cleaning disinfection and sterilization process, uh, process. we must be aware about the wide variety of the sterilization method uh, available and we must understand about implication implication of the each approach we should know about the right sterilization technique for the instrument and uh, uh, instrument contaminated should be aware about the different disinfection sterilization requirement for the critical semi critical and non critical item at the end i would like to conclude to this presentation as we all know the healthcare associated infection is continuously increasing every hospital and because of it the mortality and morbidity is higher among the patient for the how for the prevention of it we have to be educate the all the healthcare worker is about uh, appropriate sterilization procedure avoidance of the excessive use of the optimum selection of the antibiotic and proper treatment and disposable of biomedical waste can go long way in the preventing the hospital acquired infection at the last the point we have to be remember we are the nurse and we are the primary caretaker for the any patient to so always be, we we have to be the patient so hence we have to responsible to ensuring the patient safety so we we have to be always up to date on all the relevant guideline protocol practice that ensure the minimize the controlling the infection and also the proper use of antibiotic we also practice the correct technique of the different sterilization method and uh, different disinfectant where it is to be used always we have to be collaborate with the doctor ensure the patient receive the appropriate antibiotic and we have to be easy discuss with the the doctor about the changes if it is required we have to be ensure that biomedical waste is correctly segregated and stored in the treated and disposed form thank you everyone i hope i have delivered the as per your expectation thank you very much sir if anyone wants to ask any question they can unmute themselves and ask the question is there anyone fine uh, thank you very much sir for sharing your deep knowledge about the role of nurse in infection control now to impart a befitting conclusion uh, i now request uh, ms rashmi limbachia nursing tutor dpcn to propose a vote of thanks Uh, good afternoon to all respected dignitaries and the delegates i rashmi limbachia nursing tutor in sa patel college of nursing nadia it is my privilege to present the vote of thanks of this e conference on objective structures clinical examinations and role of nurse in infection control organized by iqsc and department of fundamental of nursing first i am heartily thankful to the management of ma gujarat medical society for facility to conference with constant support i would like to convey my sincerely gratitude to dr b s salas sir director of dinsa patel college of nursing i am indeed to grateful to you sir for your continuous guidance and resounding support as a backbone of the conference thank you sir i would like to express my profound gratitude to mrs asa patel principal of jinera amdabad and mr anil kumar patidar assistant professor manikaka topawala institute of charuchat uh, 
Thank you, sir, for sparing the time from busy schedule and accepting our invitation to share your knowledge and to be part of conference. Thank you, sir, and thank you, ma'am. Uh, I like to express our sincere thank to Principal Professor Virendra Jain sir, organizing chairman of conference for giving logistic coverage in the planning and organizing conference. Uh, conference. Thank you, sir. I am thankful to Mr. Nixon Das, organizing secretary, assistant professor, profound uh, fundamental of nursing department for massive and tireless effort to make this conference successfully. Here, I would like to thank to all fundamental of nursing department member, Ms. Niyadi Patel, Mr. Swapnil Makwan, Ms. Surbi Chowda, and Mrs. Simi Mahida for their absolute support. I must mention heartily thanks to all nursing family for excellent response and big thanks to all delegates. I would like to thank to all organizing committee members, non-teaching staff, students, without your participants and great support, this conference cannot achieve high standard of success. My special thanks to technical committee for making this conference on virtual mode. I thank to everyone whose contribute has made this conference a successful one. Thank you all. So here we end the conference. Thank you very much everyone for attending the conference and making it a successful one. Have a nice day.